Dear Dr. Donfried, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to be part of your event as one of your speakers for the 33rd anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. Today I'm replacing Ambassador Ayeti, who unfortunately was not able to be here with us since he had to travel yesterday due to unforeseen duties. We have chosen on purpose the 9th of November when you have asked us to join your event. And that is because this date represents several uh, important events in the German history, like the proclamation of the Republic in Germany in 1918 and the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. It is an honor and particular privilege to have the opportunity to address you at the Academy for Cultural Diplomacy and to represent the youngest nation in Europe, as many have called us, the country of youth, not just in terms of the years that we exist since 2008, but also in terms of the age of our population. As some of you may know, uh, more than 50% of the people of Kosovo are under 25 years of age. Today, 33 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, history has arrived in its present. That would sound like a paradox, but what, we, what the world looks like today, politically, is something we didn't anticipate. Nevertheless, it would not be true to say that this is the first war in Europe since the fall of the Berlin Wall. Although the fall of the wall has, uh, and the unification of Germany has uh, provided hope and uh, 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 strength for many countries and changes for many countries. Just two years after, there was a new war in the middle of Europe. We have been a witness of wars in the Western Balkan countries that lasted for a decade and produced large number of victims around the Balkans. Just in Kosovo, from February 98 to, February, to June 99, more than 13,000 were killed, thousands of women were raped by genocidal regime of Milosevic, 16,000 persons are still missing, and 128,000 houses and countless of works of art and historical buildings were burned down. But perhaps these events in Balkans did not have the same scale of implication as the war of Ukraine is having and is affecting all of us. The Russia's war in Ukraine is definitely the third challenge that we have uh, witnessed since two decades, after the financial and economic crisis in 2008 and the crisis produced by COVID pandemic since 2020. Russia's aggression against Ukraine is having an impact in the geopolitics. According to an article in The Economist, the war against Ukraine has affected the global balance and power and will establish a new world order, which, is, which seems to be unpredictable at this phase all on how this will unfold. Nevertheless, this war has exposed some strengths and weaknesses that many countries are facing in Europe and beyond. It has put on surface the fact that countries in different regions and continents rely heavily on many uh, levels, uh, which this can be considered as a strength in peaceful times. But now we see that in conflict, uh, this can also be considered as a weakness, especially if we rely heavily on supply of food, supply of energy and security. These events are influencing the thinking around the world on how to redesign our geostrategic goals and relations in order to balance between economic cooperation and security preservation. At the same time, this war is reminding us once again the importance of having strong multilateral and transatlantic relations and cooperation. And Kosovo is the best example on what can be achieved when alliances come together to protect basic human rights values. The war in Ukraine will deepen even further the division of the world in two types of political systems, the authoritarian and democratic camps. So the authoritarian countries could strengthen the authoritarian and illiberal tendencies in political elites in many countries, and the fears that this also can be used by authoritarian uh, political parties and elites to produce uh, an anti-EU and anti-Western approach. 
The war in Ukraine is a wake-up call for Europe, confirming that NATO and the US will remain central pillars of Europe's security and defense policy. The security of EU and NATO are interconnected, and today the war in Ukraine has shown the importance of NATO and its enlargement with new European states. Having said that, I would like to also focus a bit on what the war in Ukraine um, can affect and is affecting the region where I come from, Western Balkans. Before going more deeper, I would like to emphasize that since the war in Ukraine started, Kosovo was one of the first countries in the region to align, uh, to fully align our policy with European Union and adopt the transatlantic approach by strongly condemning the military aggression of Russia and Ukraine. Our government has expressed its unreserved solidarity and support with Ukraine and its people. We have approved sanctions against Russia. We have committed ourselves to receive 20 journalists from Ukraine, which will be hosted and provided houses and space to work as to continue their work as journalists. We have committed to accept up to 25,000 refugees from Ukraine, and we have suspended all visa requirements for all Ukrainians who want to and wish to travel to Kosovo. Well, those with a sense of history understand that local developments in Western Balkans are never really locally. The region remains a geopolitical zone for non-Western powers, all of whom have interests and strategic goals. When non-Western powers try to increase the influence in our region, the result is to exacerbate regional instability, while the Western engagement in our region, in contrast, seeks to stabilize the, the region. We have seen uh, many events and incidents that are rising uh, since the war in Ukraine that are rising in our region. Just on November 3rd took place the summit of Berlin process in Berlin. For those of you who are not familiar with what is Berlin process, is a platform that was initiated by uh, Germany to bring six Western Balkan countries in uh, same table to discuss regional cooperation that would bring a stronger uh, connection between each other. Um, in this meeting on 3rd of November, uh, that was led by Chancellor Scholz, all leaders of six Western Balkan countries participated and signed three very important agreements. The agreement on freedom of movement, the agreement on recognition of university degrees, and the agreement of uh, recognition of professional qualifications. This, these agreements and this ceremony was supposed to be celebrated by all countries in the region. It was a big step that was achieved in our re regional cooperation. Nevertheless, the mood was damped by um, Serbia when they sent their army, the next day they sent their army in the border with Kosovo and rose their army alert to high. These events reminded me of the same events we saw in the border of Ukraine before the invasion of Russia. Instead of supporting Kosovo Serbs to integrate in the Kosovar institutions and society, Serbia is using their representatives of Serb community in north of Kosovo, not just to withdraw from Kosovo institutions, but also to escalate the situation. In other words, Kosovo Serbs boycott of Kosovo institution that was that is being orchestrated by Serbia is coming right after the process of the Ber of the Berlin process where we signed the three agreements and right after a very serious proposal by uh, the government of Germany and and France. The EU should understand finally that the Zeitenwende or the turning point cannot be managed without Western Balkans. The EU is not complete without Western Balkan countries, without Ukraine, without Georgia, and without Moldova. Since 24th February, after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, finally the EU understands that having the Western Balkans join the EU, it's of geostrategic importance and interest for EU. Without peace and stability in this region, we cannot achieve uh, peace in this continent. And peace can be maintained in continent by full membership of all Western Balkan countries in EU and in NATO. 
the influence of non-Western powers in Balkans is stronger than 30 years ago. Three decades of active American and European engagement in the Balkans have been marked more by success than by failure. When the US and European Union work closely together and share the same point of view for the Balkans, one sees hope and progress. 30 years later, the US and the EU should understand that the list of challenges is not the same as 30 years ago. It is much more unpredictable. So the story of the Berlin Wall is one of division and repression, but also of yearning for freedom. Exactly 30 years ago, we would have experienced an important lesson than that democracies do not fight each other. The battle between democracy and autocracy, between liberty and repression, will be even more important in the coming decades. The Republic of Kosovo is and will remain one of the best examples what democratic world can achieve when it stands together to defend values of freedom, democracy, and human rights. The war in Ukraine is not a war just between Russia and Ukraine, but between two different regimes. It is democracy versus autocracy. This leads me to my last point, that we Kosovars would not have survived in the 1999, and I would not be today in this stage if it wouldn't have been the unity of democrat democratic world. We could have not achieved the success if we wouldn't have our friends. The democratic world stood by us not just in the 1990, but in every step of the way as we build our statehood. And I think the same values are at stake in Ukraine today. This shows how important these partnership and alliances are. And it shows that our real power as democratic countries lies precisely in our partnership. Thank you for your attention. Hello, I'm Ibrahim, I'm a student here in ICD, and I thank you for the insightful speech. My question is, uh, do you think it is a good thing that Kosovo joining EU, which also brings freedom of movement between EU and Kosovo, considering the current economic development level and mm, everything related to economics, do you think it's a good thing for Kosovo? Thank you. Thank you, Ibrahim, for your question. If you ask me from Kosovar perspective, I think is the best thing if we join the European Union. And not just for the benefits that we would get out of joining the EU, but also of the contribution that we can give to the family of uh, European Union member states. And not just for Kosovo, it is important that all countries in the region join European Union because this means that we in the region will share the same values as EU countries do share. And that is the right to freedom of movement, the right to respect the sovereignty of each other, the right to have a better economic life and a better cooperation. This would also bring uh, a long-standing uh, peace and stability in the whole region and in the whole continent. So it is important for all of us that we have the same aspiration. And, and, and not just to join EU because this is a long process and it is uh, not a shortcut for peace in the region, but it is important for all countries in the region and for all countries in Europe who wants to join EU to aspire and to believe in the process to transform our societies to bring the same values that EU have in our region and there, therefore uh, then we will be also ready to, to join EU. Uh, 
Hi, good, uh, good morning. I'm Cyril. I'm from the Philippines. Thank you for your um, presentation. I was just um, wondering, um, since we're also talking about um, a lot of us students here are cultural diplomacy students, um, I would just like to ask also um, what role does cultural diplomacy um, um, play for Kosovo in terms of establishing peace and security in the, in the Western Balkan and also in the greater European regional area? Thank you. Thank you for your question. I think cultural diplomacy is one of the strongest segments of diplomacy, especially for countries that are not well known in the world. Mm -hmm. And we have not been well known before the war. And then during the war, the Kosovo, Kosovo was uh, in news for, for the war that was happening in, in our country. And this, this news that, we, that were produced in Balkans continued even after the war. Uh, therefore, cultural diplomacy for us is one of the most important uh, uh, elements because through, through this segment, you can uh, represent your country, uh, you can represent the people, you can represent the values you believe in as a society, and you can better connect people between each other. The more we know for each other in also cultural aspect, the better the understanding is between all nations. Uh, absolutely, it's uh, one of the most strongest uh, um, mechanism that could help us uh, to to be out there. And one of the examples is that right after the Declaration of Independence, we uh, or some artists in in Kosovo produced a monument that is called Newborn. And this was <laughs> used, uh, this, this is still uh, exhibited in uh, Pristina, capital city of Kosovo. And the newborn reflects the, uh, the uh, not just the, as a new country, the newest country in Europe, but it reflects also, as I said in my speech, the, the population, the, the age of population in our country. This is one branding that we have and that we use it and that has been successful. Uh, we are known, uh, at least in Europe, I don't want to say worldwide because the world is big, <laughs> but we are known in, in Europe for, for being a young nation and young country and an and energetic uh, uh, population. Uh, just in connection with, um, with Mark's um, comment about um, the use of uh, er, the example of cultural diplomacy that uh, you have uh, pursued as a young nation, as a country, I was just wondering: um, Are there any um, projects that um, Kosovo is pursuing with the direct neighbors like Serbia, Albania, and the other countries that are promote or is promoting, um, you know? Um, a sense of community because I know um, politically it's still a struggle you know um, there are still some debates uh, about um, the political identity of Kosovo as a country um, but I was wondering how is Kosovo using cultural diplomacy together with the neighboring countries in terms of establishing um, a more uh, Western Balkan or a Balkan identity in, in that sense uh Establishing a Balkan identity as a region or as? As a region, um, mm. or in terms of you, you using cultural identity to promote like um, stability or yes. promo promoting um, a sense of community uh, yes. in, in the region. How, how do you do that? Are, are there any projects that you pursue with other countries? Um, 
I'm not sure if I can speak on particular projects that we are doing currently, but there have been continuously projects, not just by us, but that have been supported also by the European Union funds. And this is also because uh, a region that came after the war is not easy to uh, start immediately and uh, communicate and exchange uh, ideas and, and, uh, and people. But this has started slowly uh, with a lot of assistance from not just European Union, but many other organizations. I was part of one organization, OSCE, that did work on, on, on these aspects to firstly bring people together in Kosovo to make everyone feel as part of our country, and then also having uh, connections with other countries. There are countless uh, work that are done, be it in governmental level or society level. I know that uh, sometimes in governmental level is more difficult to uh, implement different projects and sometimes it's easier in uh, uh, um, through uh, uh, civil society uh, organizations and institutions. Uh, there are uh, ongoing uh, discussions uh, that are being uh, either bilaterally with countries. We do have, let's say, in governmental level, governmental meetings that we have with uh, Albania, with Northern Macedonia, with Montenegro. Uh, we do not have uh, so much exchange with uh, Serbia due to obvious reasons. And also with Bosnia and Herzegovina was not always very easy to have this due to the uh, structure that uh, governmental uh, government of Bosnia has, because uh, the Republika Srpska in Bosnia does not recognize Kosovo, and as a result, we had until recently visas uh, between the two countries. So we we almost are borders with each other, and we had to to have a visa to go to, to Bosnia. But now with the Berlin process that I mentioned before, with the agreement for freedom of movement, has um, or will remove this requirement. And also uh, the Berlin process agreements uh, are done by governments, but in, pr in practice these are mainly for people because it uh, should enable the freedom of movement, which would enhance also the exchange of, of cultures and will make it more possible for people in the region to be, um, to move around, uh, around uh, the Balkans by, uh, let's say, studying in another country and working in your country or studying in your country and working in another country. So I think th this this is also a very important segment that we are pursuing, and we hope will produce a b um, uh, more concrete results. Any other comments or questions? Please. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you for your presentation. My name is Eliverta. I come from Albania. I wanted to ask the question, do you think that sometime in the near future or far future, there will be a chance or a possibility for people of uh, Kosovo and uh, Serbia or the governments to uh, sit together, maybe with a tool of cultural diplomacy, to maybe exchange some sort of ideas, political ideas or cultural views? I know it's really difficult and tense with the situation, but I'm asking for the, the future. I think everything is possible for the future, <laughs> but uh, it depends where, how far or how near, how near that future is. Uh, from our side, we want to uh, uh, finalize the dialogue and receive uh, mutual recognition or, or have a mutual recognition between our two countries, which in result would enable also at some point cultural exchange or cultural diplomacy segment. Uh, from uh, civil society level, I think it takes part in, in some extent. I am not sure how big, but I know that there are exchanges between uh, uh, NGOs, 
uh, in be it in in culture or or in political discussions, but these are outside of governmental engagement. If we want to have as a state to state engagement in the topic of cultural diplomacy, this to my opinion can be possible after we resolve the issues that we have with Serbia uh, in, in this regard. It is not easy to speak only for cultural diplomacy with a country that does not uh, uh, recognize your existence, that does not as well recognize the atrocities that were done uh, towards us. We are still in a phase of uh, discussing about this, of having a, res a concrete result that all parties sit down and talk openly of, of what was done. We first would want to see uh, distance from, uh, be it this uh, government or future governments in Serbia, from what was done before. Unfortunately, we don't see this, not just in Kosovo, but also what happened in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, in Croatia. We still haven't heard any governmental voice that distance themselves from the crimes that were done in the past. Therefore, this is step-by-step -step, uh, basis, and uh, I do hope and I do want to believe that there will be a time that uh, this will be finalized, and then we, w we will be able to also exchange cultural diplomacy. Express our sincere gratitude for excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.